Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of me trying to find vintage hollows in Japanese card stores to complete my vintage hollow binder. Today we are in the, the very famous Akihabara, as you can see right there from the station. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of card stores in this area and we're only going to go to a few today. There's actually two in this building right here. You might see their six and seven floor Dragon Star and uh, Card Rush, but we're not gonna go into these today because they don't really have any vintage. But if you're looking for card stores, these are definitely worth checking out. But uh, yeah, let's head to the first destination. All right, our first stop today is the famous Radio Kaikan or Radio Kaikan building. Pretty, pretty insane building right here. Uh, there are a few card stores in here and a few of them, I think Yellow Submarine and then Muggy. They do have vintage. There is a Sila Boys right at the entrance on the right side. You might be able to see right there. They usually don't have vintage. But we're gonna check out the other stores. I've never bought anything here just because the prices are never really good. It's always too expensive in here. But you know what? It's always worth having a look just, just in case. Great selection. A lot of cards, a lot of hollows. But obviously it's always all about the condition so if the condition doesn't check out then you know you never know prices may look good but you won't find out until you actually actually inspect the cards but we'll definitely have a look at some of these for example the mew back there we'll have a look at the mew for sure they even have some they even have some english shadow list right here which is kind of funny um here's more mystery pack type of cards in here uh, so for example this one 60,000 yen, so I don't know, 500 bucks, 450, 450 bucks, there's 8 EXs in here. I don't know, probably not worth it. Uh, they also have Master Ball mystery packs, so 5 Master Balls for 10,000 yen. Could be good, could be bad, I don't know. And the other thing with, the other thing with mystery packs is that usually the condition isn't going to be good. Like they'll, they'll get rid of the lower condition cards this way. So be careful. All right, Ibex from the future here, doing a bit of voiceover uh, in places where I didn't speak during the filming. Maybe it was people nearby or whatever. But yeah, Maggie also had some really cool sealed packs, other sealed stuff. Uh, all this, all these packs were like half half the price, like you know, one and a half, two years ago. Kind of crazy. Uh, really nice selection though of uh, sealed stuff. Lots of modern, but also some older stuff, like that hard gold, soul silver special product in the back there that's really cool with the promos. Uh, price is a little high on the high end here. 45,000 yen for Sky Legend is a bit high. Uh, EV Heroes for over 60,000 is definitely high. We're selling for like 50,000 on this, on, uh, on Sneaker Dunk not too long ago. Now here we are in Yellow Submarine. They have different condition ratings, one to 10 scale. You see that little number before the price or in front of the price. So yeah, number eight, so condition eight. Pretty good condition actually for this card. Some four or fives, so that's usually what you see for older cards. There's number four, condition four Mew, for example. Well, I'm back outside. I never managed to stay in there for more than like 15, 20 minutes. So many people inside, always gets a bit overwhelming. But I did pick up a couple cards. So I did find two cards. One I think really good deal, one I think okay deal. But yeah, stay tuned to see these cards later. Now here's a very, very small place. This is uh, Fuku Fuku Toreka. They have some, several places, but this one is just like on the other side of the Radio Kaikan building. Um, very, very small. Uh, last time I was here, their condition ratings were like really off, so didn't like it. We'll skip it today. All right, we're now walking up to one of my favorite places, actually. It's a little bit further away from the station, like it's not right in the middle of uh, all the other card shops. It's called Cardon, and it's actually owned by a very uh, famous Japanese YouTuber. They have a smaller selection of cards, so not that much vintage usually, but their prices are fair and their condition ratings are on point. So I really like coming here. Uh, every time I'm in Akiba, I always check out Cardon right here. Here it is, to the inside. I can see walking into Cardon here, they have a lot of different trading card games, One Piece, Dragon Ball, Dual Masters, Magic, Pokemon. Lots of cool stuff in here as well. Some Munch promos, Taipei Pikas. They don't have the most Pokemon cards. You can see like the vintage Old Back Hollows. Like that's it, just a few. 
Their condition rating is interesting. They have different ones, so like clear sleeve is condition A, condition B is a yellow sleeve, condition C is a blue sleeve, and then condition D is a black sleeve. So this is a condition B, uh, sorry, C, mu to EX, condition B, ho -O. And then these are clear sleeves, these uh, sun and moon cards. So clear sleeve again, condition A, some alt arts. Just some really nice cards to look at. You see a lot of these old back hollows are condition B. But there are a couple clear sleeve condition A one, so the Lugia 22,000 yen. Seems like a pretty good price for a you know condition A card. They also have mystery packs. You pay 5,000 yen, you get one card. Um, there's different level prizes. So this is a Tokusho, the top prize cards you can win. You can see them right here, it's a magic. I think that's one piece there on the right, maybe. Uh, they do have some Pokemon stuff as well. Pika Greyfeld hat, some other cards you can see right here. And then we're going down to the next level, the lower tier, number one. So tier one, you can see the cards you can win. And this is tier two. And then the cheapest, tier three, for example, we have the Taipei Pika valued at 3,400 yen in the store. So for 5,000 yen, getting the worst possible outcome, 3,400 yen is not bad. They also have some cheap PSA 10 slabs you can win in the tier three. Pretty good, not bad, honestly. They also have 2,000 yen mystery pack, uh, Shadowless Beedrill. I think this is tier two, maybe. I think that was tier three, potentially. Uh, we'll see it in a second there. Yeah, so now we're looking at tier two here. Then this is tier one. So the Taipei Pika is tier one for the 2,000 yen mystery pack. And the top prize, you can see like a booster box, for example. Cardon always has crazy PSA cards for sale. Always like super high grades, high end cards. There's a first dead Zard down there. Uh, this is a crazy card, a creature's deck card. These are pretty damn rare, holy cow. And just, you know, casual Crystal Charizard PSA 10, no big deal. Something for the Magic fans as well, Power 9. There was a Black Lotus all the way at top left there. I don't know if you caught it. Lots of dual lands. Yeah. Lots and lots of dual lands. And some crazy promos. Lucky Stadium, Tropical Wind. Crazy prices, holy cow. These are expensive. All right, I did pick up one card from Cardon. Always a pleasure to be in the store. They actually have signs that say that you can film inside as long as you don't bother other people. So yeah, one of the hollows we saw, I picked up. Stay tuned to find out which one. Here's the Mandarake building. I was here a couple weeks ago and very disappointed with their condition ratings and they didn't have a very good selection. I'll skip it today, but we'll check it out in the future because you never know, but uh, yeah. Not what it used to be, Mandalake. All right, so back there, the blue signs. That's another Surugaya, but we're not gonna go there today. Limited time, but we can come back another time. They do have some vintage. They have a bunch of different stuff. Um, but yeah, worth checking out usually, but uh, hard to find good stuff. So usually I would advise people against going to the stores on the main road. I can see right here behind me is the main busy road. Um, the stores on the main road tend to be not the best, but there is a couple in this building right here. Uh, it's on the 8th floor, Atachu, and then it doesn't show on here, but I think it's on the 4th floor, a place called El Dorado. Uh, they have a good selection of vintage cards and uh, okay prices. Alright, here's 4th floor entrance to El Dorado. What I like about this place especially is not just that they have a lot of older cards, but they have like a dedicated like inspection station with a with like a magnifying light, so you can really take your time and inspect the car properly. So here are just some screenshots. There's too small, too many people, I didn't want to film, but you can see like a condition A Lugia yeah, was like uh, double the price of Cardon, so <laughs> there you go, kind of kind of wild. Just to give you an idea of what they had. And uh, some crazy promos here too, always nice seeing these cards. Picked up one card in El Dorado, I love the way they package your cards, cardboard inside as well. Uh, no car shop does it better than they do it here, honestly. So yeah, stay tuned to find out. All right, now we're on the eighth floor. Check out Atatsu, it's just behind me. Just in here. All right, this is Atatsu. Um, honestly, the best selection for vintage cards. Uh, okay prices, a bit on the high side, condition you have to inspect just like always. But I just filmed some cool cards here. I was looking for the Dark Raichu. <laughs> I couldn't find it right here. Uh, I also had a look at, we'll see it in just a second. I actually inspected that Umbreon. I didn't pick it up. 
It wasn't quite good enough for the price, in my opinion. 100,000 yen for a crazy uh, grand party. That's about the PSA 9 price. I think PSA 9 is maybe a little bit more expensive, so depends on the condition. As always, you know, whenever you see these prices in these types of videos, also Maslakis, yeah, whenever you see prices in videos, you think, oh my god, that's such a good price for this card, I can't believe it. It's always a condition question. There's actually the Dark Brightest that they did have it. Um, but yeah, um, don't think just because you see a low price that it's like, oh, these are all cheap cards in these card shops. Uh, usually they're low prices for a reason. But yeah, always nice to see these beautiful cards, some shinings. Holy cow, holy cow. Now they also had uh, some mid-era stuff we'll see later. But yeah, like you name it, they had it. Base set hollows here, of course. Hit one Chan that we still need. Oh, there's actually no rarity, I think, right there. But yeah, um, <clears throat> mid-era stuff, so level X's, as well as uh, Delta Species. That's not uncommon. Usually if card shops have older cards, they will have mid-era too, of course, right? But uh, just a really cool selection. Also lots of e-reader stuff. Uh, I was looking to see if they had a Karen Zambrion from Versus Series. They didn't have it, so that was one card they didn't have. Oh, you see that Steelix, 12,000 yen? Gives you an idea of the prices, right? So like, I picked up a PSA 9 for 6,000 yen. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, cool sealed stuff too. I think there's a red and green gift set just down there. You see it maybe. Cool packs, cool decks, uh, Southern Islands as well. They had an empty um, original starter deck, kind of neat. And this really funny, quirky, huge mystery block. Yeah, that store is crazy. I could have probably filled my whole binder, completed my goal in just one store. <laughs> but, as you may have seen, their prices were definitely on the higher side. Condition was a bit all over the place, but I did pick up one card. All right, that's it for this time. Let's head back home and look at the cards. Back home with the binder and let's have a look at the cards I bought. So the first card I picked up was this Jungle Wigglytuff from Muggy, 1,780 yen. Definitely uh, on the higher side, I'm gonna not gonna lie, um, but I really like the condition. It's actually really clean. It has a nice swirl here and another one here, a little harder to see, but kind of like two half swirls in a way. Um, it has no whitening. It has like some, some minor scratches on the back, but overall, this is a very, very nice clean card. And uh, it also feels, like sometimes you can tell by just holding the cards, if they're like clean or not, or like mint or not. It's like this is a clean card, um, but I have to be careful with my budget because I can't afford to spend this money on like the less popular cards all the time. <laughs> but I decided to pull the trigger this time because this also completes our jungle set. I'll put it in a binder afterwards. And then the other card I picked up from Maggie was the Mew. So 2,780 yen. I decided to get one of the more popular cards this time, slightly more expensive cards, and I just couldn't resist this Mew. Amazing swirl, as you can see right there. Really, the swirl is what kind of sealed the deal for me. Uh, it's also a very clean card. It has like a little bit of whitening down here, very hard to see, and it has like one little weird thing up here. Yeah, you can tell like it's not gradable because of that, but for the binder, like honestly, I couldn't care less. Other than that, it is really clean, and just like the Wigglytuff, it also feels like a clean card. And the swirl just kind of convinced me. And so I think this was actually a really good deal. Like even with that at the top edge back there, uh, I think this is actually a solid price for this card in this condition. So very, very happy with this pickup. It also has a really nice hollow blade, as you can see, like on Brigitte Tough. But yeah, so jungle hollow set complete. Very nice, very satisfying. And then the Mew goes right here. And then next up, I picked up a Team Rocket card from Cardon. So I bought one of the few hollows that they had. I bought the Dark Arbok for 600 yen. So you can see it has a yellow sleeve. It's in a yellow sleeve, so this is Condition B. But I was pretty happy with this Condition B. Um, but it's definitely worse than the other cards we saw. As you can see, like there's some noticeable whitening right there. Uh, a little bit up here. It has also has more scratches. But this is like... You know, lightly played in my opinion. It's got some scuffs on the back here and there. But overall, still pretty clean. And actually, I still need it, even though there's a dark Arbok here. But this is uh, an English one I picked up at some point in the past. <laughs> 2015, I guess. 
uh, but I wanted the Japanese one for the binder. So this is like a bonus card I have now. You know, that Lugia we saw for 22,000 yen in condition A at Cardon seems like a really good price and I might actually go back for it. But the, the thing with condition A always is that um, it doesn't mean PSA 10, right? It could still be like PSA 8 condition. So you always have to be careful and inspect each card. All right, next up, Eldorado. You've already seen this nice little envelope. I kept it in the envelope just because I wanted to show you. Uh, usually card shops will just give you cards in like a little paper bag or a plastic bag, which is why I would always recommend to, you know, bring some top loaders to transport your cards back home. Uh, in Muggy, they came in top loaders, so that was nice. But uh, I like Eldorado because they actually, you know, really take care of the cards. And so I bought a Dark Vile Plume, 500 yen. Very good price, I think. Uh, same thing here, kind of. The Swirl, the, the Swirl kind of sealed the deal for me. And it's actually, again, in like decent condition. Like not bad at all. Uh, it's got that one indent there. So that's why it's 500 yen. And again, for me, for the binder, like, I really don't care. Like, I, you look at this card like this, it looks super clean. You look at it like this, it looks super clean. Perfect binder copy. And this one goes right here. Very nice, very nice. And the last pickup of the day, another Team Rocket card. This one is from Atachu. It is the Rocket's Sneak Attack. 1,400 yen. So again, a bit on the pricier side for a less popular card. They had like 10 of these. <laughs> this was the second most expensive one. They had one war that was a bit more expensive, like a couple hundred yen. But I like this one condition wise. Again, really happy with this card as well. Uh, no real whitening, a few minor scratches on the back. Um, yeah, very clean card. It has another swirl right there behind the hand. So pretty happy with this pickup too. And it goes right here. Bada bing, bada boom. Very nice, very cool. These were the cards I picked up. Uh, for the future, I definitely need to be a bit more careful with how much I spend. I mean, these are all fair prices, but it's gonna get expensive real quick. And actually, bonus, a little bonus. If you're still here, a little bonus. I picked up a couple more things from, uh, from Atachu. So I actually ended up buying the <laughs> 1996 starter deck, obviously opened, but it was 10 yen, like 10 yen which is like seven cents, seven US cents. I mean, basically for free. Uh, these actually do sell online for more than that, but I don't want to resell this. I just figured, hey, this is kind of a cool way to store some cards, you know, have the original the original uh, starter deck here. It's a, kind of a piece of history. Obviously it's a little beat up and all of that, but I don't know, I just figured kind of cool. I know it's empty and all of that, but 10 yen to store some cards in, in history. Figured it was kind of neat and <laughs> also, I did buy, I did buy the brick. I did buy the 500 yen mystery brick that has versus series energies on the outside. And I actually bought this, so I don't expect to come anything good to come out of this. But I figured it looked kind of cool, kind of interesting. And I bought it for another video. So I will open this up in a future video. And then together, we'll find out what's in here. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like these card hunting videos. I certainly enjoyed them. Um, Still, still many, many, many left. A lot of expensive ones left too. Uh, I'm probably not gonna go for the Shinings because they are just so incredibly expensive in Japanese, like even in really bad condition. And if I wanted them in like PSA 7-ish condition for the binder, man, never say never, maybe one day, but I'll be happy if I can complete the Hollows without the Shinings. Um, so yeah, we're getting close to... Completing Team Rocket here, a few left, uh, nothing too crazy left here. The Raichu is a, is a, well, actually the Raichu, I keep forgetting, but the Raichu in Japanese is actually in, in uh, I think it's in Neo Discovery. In Neo Discovery or Neo Revelations. Um, yeah. Going to be fun to check out more card shops in the future. Of course, we're going to go back to Akihabara, still many places to check out there. And, you know, the places I went to this time, they still have tons of other cards I could have inspected too. But I only bought, bought a few this time. But yeah, we've done jungle, so that's done. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, I'll talk more about this binder in detail in the future because some, some stuff in here is maybe quite interesting. But anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up. I very much appreciate that. 
And if you don't want to miss the next video, click subscribe. Very few people who watch my channel are subscribed. So click that button to not miss the next video. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.